Okay everyone, here's a really common question that I get asked. You've done really well in your interview, you've secured a place at medical school, but the time has come to order a stethoscope. So which one do you get? Hi there guys, my name's Ollie. Welcome back to the channel. I'm a final year medical student at the University of Warwick on the graduate entry programme. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about which models of stethoscope you might find useful for when you go to medical school. Not just that, but what you might actually do with them as a medical student. You know, you go to medical school, you assume that you're going to need a stethoscope at some point before you become a doctor, but you know, what do you actually need it to be able to do? What are you going to be using it for as a medical student? And then lastly, if few other considerations such as the colour and engraving, things like that that you might be thinking about when it comes time to buy your own. So firstly, which model of stethoscope do you need? There is no hard and fast rule, right? But what I would suggest for medical school is that you don't need anything particularly fancy, just something that is going to be able to let you listen to the chest, listen to the heart sounds, listen to the lung fields, bowel sounds, things like that. And crucially to demonstrate that you are able to do so during your medical school exams because that's what everything ultimately comes down to. So along with simply having a stethoscope, at some point you need to learn how to use it properly, where to place it on the chest, and the sorts of things that you might be listening for, whether that's a wheeze or extra heart sounds or brewies, things like that. So what this means in practice is that you need something pretty basic for all intents and purposes, with the obvious caveat that ideally you want to be buying as few stethoscopes as possible. So you want something that will continue to be of the standard and quality and usefulness once you become a doctor so that you can take it on into practice. So it therefore needs to be good enough to pick up those diagnostic signs in a clinical setting, not simply for the purposes of your exams, but when you're examining patients by yourself as a junior doctor, it obviously needs to be able to pick up those signs in the real world because you'll be using them to help diagnose patients. And to some extent this is also true when you're a clinical years medical student, particularly as you're moving towards finals, like I find myself very rapidly doing, you're expected often to clerk and examine patients by yourself. And it's actually really useful in these situations to be able to tell the team you're working with, yeah, you know, actually, I think I did hear some crackles in his left lower lobe, for example. So all in all, I think what this means is that cheaping out immediately, going for something ultra cheap, that's not gonna allow you to do what you want reliably is probably not the best way forward and investing in something with at least some degree of quality is probably a good idea. So with all this in mind, the one that I normally recommend to people is either a Littmann Classic 2 or 3. These are like the standard stethoscopes that 90% of people have. These can usually be had for between 80 and 100 pounds, uh, brand new depending on where you shop, and that's what I have here. This is a Littmann Classic 3. I'll put some vanity shots over this video just so you can see a closer look at my particular one that I've got here but this is the one that you see everyone walking around with around their neck. And these are considered more than competent for a few particular reasons. Firstly is that the diaphragm, which was on this bell part, is removable uh, to use for listening to different sounds in adults. So normally it's got a paediatric diaphragm on it for listening to children because as a medical student, you don't listen to children very often. Uh, they recommend taking the diaphragm off. So you've just got the open bell, which is really useful to have. And the diaphragm here, the part that you actually place onto the patient's chest, when you apply pressure, it's got what's called a tunable diaphragm. So when you apply pressure to it, it changes the frequency response. So you can basically listen for more potential sounds at more frequencies by applying slight pressure changes to the diaphragm. And lastly, just a couple of good practice points. It's latex free, so it won't set off anyone's allergies that they don't know about yet and it's very easy to wipe and clean between patients, which is something that you should always remember to do, particularly at the moment. However, if you're looking for something a little bit more budget, and that's totally okay, something closer to the 50 pound mark, then from the research I've been able to do, either the MDF MD1 or the Littmann Lightweight series, which have these slightly different looking diaphragms, seem to be really good, reputable choices. Basically, they're from well-known brands, MDF and Littmann both have a really good reputation in the stethoscope market, and they'll let you do all the things that you need to be able to do as a medical student. I'm sure many of you will have noticed that you can also go much more expensive if you're talking about things like the Littmann Cardiology 4, 
or the electronic 3200 series stethoscope, you're then more in the realm of two to 300 pounds. And while I'm absolutely sure that these are very excellent stethoscopes in the hands of specialists that know how to use them, for medical school, I would suggest that they're, they're a little bit overkill because firstly, because you're not gonna be listening to patients complex enough to kind of warrant the extra technology. And also just as a med student, you don't have the skill set, I would argue, to use things like that properly. And I think I'd be pretty comfortable in suggesting maybe waiting until you're in something like anesthetics, ITU, cardiology, specific specialty training before you start going down that road, just so you get the right benefit from your tools at the right time. And there is also the element that some medical schools I have heard are a bit funny about allowing, particularly the electronic stethoscopes in exams, which is obviously a big thing, just like taking a calculator that can store functions into your GCSE or A-level maths exams. Med schools can be a bit weird about it. So now finally, just a couple of housekeeping points about buying stethoscopes. I know it's really, really tempting to run out and buy a stethoscope as soon as you get your offer for med school. However, what I would recommend if you can tolerate the wait is waiting until you start medical school because in the first couple of weeks, all the big vendors are desperate to sell stethoscopes to the new students who they know are all super excited and willing to pay. Certainly I know companies like Medisave, this isn't affiliated with them in any way, this is just who I got my stethoscope from. They did a 20% discount offer and I think you got a case and some other goodies as well if you bought within your first few weeks of medical school or something like that. And on a stethoscope that can be the best part of £100, to me, that's kind of free money that you might as well save. And you're not gonna be examining people properly in the first few weeks of med school either, so don't worry about missing out on anything. Lastly, the only other thing that people ask me about is colors and engraving and things like that. You know, can I have this ridiculous light blue? Can I have my name and stuff engraved on it? Yeah, of course you can. Stethoscopes seem to be one of those pretty expressive things that you're allowed to do, like wearing brightly coloured patterned sock or whatever. Um, as a doctor, even though you've got a uniform as such, you can have a very jazzy stethoscope. Or you can have a more kind of subdued and edgy one. So mine obviously has all black tubing and it's got a smoked gunmetal uh, finish. So the, the metal parts are also this dark smoked colour just because I quite liked that colour scheme, matte black everything and so on, and it's got my name engraved on it as well. And again, just as far as engraving goes, I'd recommend getting your name on it, probably just in case it goes missing, as they often do. Obviously, just because in hospital, stethoscopes are absolutely everywhere. They're lying around, everyone has one around their neck. And sometimes consultants, registrars, juniors will ask to borrow yours if you've got one to hand and they just need to quickly listen to someone's lung bases or something. And just specifically to address this, someone asked me, um, is it pretentious to get, say in my case, if I got Dr. Ollie Burton on my stethoscope, is that a dick thing to do? Is that a bit pretentious? Yeah, it probably is. Like I would argue it's a bit, not pretentious, but presumptuous getting Dr. anything with your name on it because it just makes the assumption that everyone makes it through medical school, which obviously not everyone does, but that's just me being a bit cynical and there's obviously the counter argument to that which is that your family might choose to get doctor whatever engraved on it just as a as a means of encouragement for you a mark of getting into medical school and how proud they are or you might get it for yourself as something to motivate you and think you know one day i will be doctor so and so and getting that on my stethoscope will motivate me harder to get through it and just in terms of keeping it professional as i say there's every chance that a consultant might ask to borrow it from you um, at some point. So obviously, whatever's on there, keep it sensible. Stethoscopes are, I think, one of the most central symbolic parts of the profession of medicine. And so it forms part of your professional identity development, TM. Um, so treat it as such. It's a part of your professional identity. Look after it, keep it with you, don't lose it, keep it in good condition and get something that suits you because with any luck you're probably going to have it for a long time. I'm actually really comforted in hospital, particularly in unknown situations, by having it around my neck because it reminds me that I got to where I am, that I am at least semi-competent and people trust me enough to examine patients and use my skills, my own judgement to listen to people, treat them properly and come to some sort of conclusion that I know basically enough 
to do a very basic assessment of people and the stethoscope for me just serves as a bit of a reminder of how far we've all come. So get something that you don't mind being with you every day, potentially for the rest of your life. Thanks for watching guys, there are three ways you can support the channel. The first one is to like, comment, subscribe, share this video with a friend, just enjoy it generally. Second, you can buy me a coffee if you found it useful using my Ko-Fi link, which will help keep me awake during the editing process. And then thirdly, you can use my referral link to save 10% off your first year of Complete Anatomy 2020, my favourite 3D anatomy learning tool. Take care guys and I'll see you next time.